In this video, we're going to talk about the five different components of pension expense when we're talking about a defined benefit pension plan. So a defined benefit pension plan is the type that gives a series of annuity payments to employees after they retire, right? So this isn't a 401k, this is a defined benefit plan, just to make that clear. So there's five different components that are going to go into calculating pension expense. Okay, so the first is called service cost. So what service cost is, is basically the additional pension benefits that were earned by employees in the prior year of having worked. So like they worked one additional year, so it's like one year of earned benefits, right? So from the past year, and I, sh I should say one additional year, one additional year. So the past year, the additional benefits that the employees earned uh, from, from working at the company, right? Now, this is actually, you, if, if you're an accountant, this is going to be given to you by an actuary, typically. I mean, you could calculate it yourself. You're going to use the time value of money to, to discount uh, the, the future payouts. And, and so I'm not going to get into all that. We'll make another video on how to calculate service cost. But now also, beyond just the additional year of benefits of, of employees, we're also going to have interest cost. And so interest cost is going to be calculated by multiplying the discount rate or interest rate that was used with that time value of money. So there'll be an interest rate, let's say 4% or something. So that interest rate is going to be multiplied by the beginning balance the beginning balance of the PBO. And the PBO is the projected benefit obligation. So this is the company looking into the future and saying, look, here are the estimates about how long we think employees will work here, et cetera. And we think our ultimate pension obligations will be, et cetera. So that PBO, the beginning balance of that, you multiply it by the interest rate. And it has to be the same rate that was used compute the service cost right with the discounting there and that's going to give you interest cost and that interest cost is going to increase it's going to increase the pension expense amount right it's going to increase it just a service cost service cost and interest cost uh, they're, they're always going to increase uh, the amount of pension expense now the next thing we want to expected rate of return on plan assets is actually going to decrease uh, the pension expense amount so the expected return, and you might think it's kind of weird, expected, let's say, why don't we use the actual return? Well, we'll have another video on that, but basically, managers are afraid that the, using the actual return will introduce too much volatility, right? So they're worried about up and down fluctuations due to changes in the value of their pension plan. You know, the stock market goes up and down, and that's what the assets are largely invested in. So they're worried about that, and so they lobbied and got it where now it's the expected return is used. So that expected return, you're going to have you're going to have that rate of return, whatever it is, and and the firm estimates this, right? So they might say I think we'll make 8.5% on our pension plan assets, right? Cuz the assets are invested, like I said, in stocks or bonds or something. And they they estimate the, the rate of return they're going to receive. And then you multiply they multiply that by the beginning balance the beginning balance of the plan assets. Right? So basically, whatever amount they have invested in the stock market or bond market and so, so forth, multiply that by the return that they expect, and that's going to decrease pension expense, which you know, makes sense if you think about it intuitively. If you're earning a return on the plan assets, that you, because you've invested, right, as you're putting money aside to satisfy this future obligation of pension, you're putting it aside, you're earning a return on it, and so that return is going to offset some of the, the pension expense, right? So this is going to be subtracted, all right? It's going to reduce pension expense. Now, you might be wondering, well, what happens if the expected return and the actual return are different? Well, nothing unless you get outside this thing that's called a corridor, right? So when you get outside this corridor, which is actually 10%, so there's this corridor, which is 10% of the PBO or fair value of plan assets, whichever is larger. So the larger of these two, if you get outside, if that difference between expected and actual gets outside or beyond this 10% of the PBO or fair value of plan assets, then at that point, 
at that point you're going to recognize the difference right the amount that goes beyond that 10 percent right so if you have if you have losses or, or if your actual return is a lot lower than the expected return then you look at that and say okay is it so much lower that it's actually that difference is exceeding 10 percent of pbr fair value plan assets if so by the amount that it's that is lower exceeds this 10 percent corridor or or is below it then you're going to recognize a gain or a loss okay so we'll just call that sometimes you'll see it called like actuarial gains or losses or something like that so, you, so you're amortize this and so this this could be positive or it could be negative right because it could be that you're having you have a, a much higher expected return than or much higher actual return than your expected return or a much lower actual return so this could go either way okay this could go either way now the amortized prior service cost is our final component and with the amortized prior service cost basically and and this also could go either way but basically what you're doing is you're making some kind of change to the prior benefits of the employee for, for typically what happens is you're amending the plan you're amending the pension plan and so typically what might happen is something like the following you say you know what I really want to reward this one employee for a job well done and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grant them an additional three years of service maybe they worked at the company 15 years and you say you know what? I'm gonna treat it as if they worked here 18 years for purposes of calculating their pension benefit when they retire why does that matter well that's going to change the amount of benefit they get right because sometimes when you compute what someone's benefit is under a defined benefit plan it'll say like well we're gonna calculate it by taking two percent times the years of service they gave to the company times their highest salary or something like that and so increasing the years of service we actually end up giving them more uh, benefit so by amending the plan you you basically as a firm you've incurred some additional cost right so we call that prior service cost and so you're going to amortize that straight line over the employees remaining uh service life right the amount of years you expect them to continue working right so you're gonna you're gonna have some uh prior service costs potentially so these five, I know this is really complicated, but you know, as we get into journal entries and so forth in, in the future videos, I just want to make sure that you, you have an understanding uh, for what are the various components of pension